The report yesterday that uh, was adopted um, wants to allow delegations uh, to present their credentials um, in June rather than in January for exceptional circumstances, which is the voting on the Secretary General and also the 17th anniversary of the Council of Europe, first of all. Secondly, it has revised uh, the, the rights that can be taken away uh, when um, a delegation um, presents its credentials and they are sanctioned. It can be ratification with sanctions. So we have been discussing on the sanction uh, mechanism. And it was a compromise um, because, uh, of course, there were the ones that asked to remove all possibility to have sanctions and, on the other hand, the ones that didn't want to change anything to the rules. So we found a compromise that was endorsed by the Assembly so that parliament, parliamentarians uh, presenting themselves can always represent themselves, speak and vote in the Assembly, which is essential for a parliamentarian. There can be other sanctions. And in the case of Russia, of course, if they present their credentials and they will be challenged, then there will be sanctions, there will be conditions. It's not unconditional, it's not returning of the Russians just like that. It will be under sanctions and with conditions, that's clear. So this report is also part of a bigger exercise where we want to put in place a joint sanctioning mechanism both at the level of the Committee of Ministers and the Assembly if member states do not uphold their obligations or violate uh, human rights. And very important, the Assembly will be able to trigger that mechanism, which was not the case in the past. I hope they will not do that, of course, uh, and it's understandable that uh, Ukraine is not happy by the idea that the Russians will be back. But, you know, this is what the Council of Europe is all about. Parliamentarians sitting together, debating, disagreeing and, you know, finding some solutions at the level of parliamentary diplomacy, if you want. And in the debate yesterday, there was a very good example of somebody who said, you know, there is a conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And still, Armenian and Azeri uh, politicians are sitting in the hemicycle, they are debating. Sometimes it's, uh, yes, it's also emotional, but at least the things are being named and discussed. Whereas since five years, if we discuss about the Russian Federation, they're not there. You know, what, what kind of a discussion is that? I understand the emotions, the feelings, the passion of countries like Georgia and Ukraine who suffer by the Russian uh, aggression, of course. On the other hand, the Baltic states, also Poland, who are afraid of Russia and think that, you know, we should keep them out and that is safer. I'm not so sure. I think if, you know, uh, you don't trust uh, one of the parties, it's maybe better to have them close rather than to put them out. In my view, in the, all the discussions that we had, I have not one time heard anyone saying, oh, we really need the Russians back for the money. Not one time. And in the, the presentations of the candidates for uh, Secretary General, we've heard very good ideas about how to solve the budgetary situation. We don't need the Russians back. This institution must be able to function without blackmail from members leaving or threatening to leave and cutting the budget. Of course, we need resilience there. We need alternatives and it's perfectly possible to think about them. For me, in my mind, not a single time I have defended this report because of the budgetary things. I would say, I would say the ball is now in their camp. Their behavior will be crucial. If they come back according to the rules, and if there is conditions, they follow the conditions and they are showing that, okay, we opened the door, but they're willing to enter on our terms, not on their terms, on our terms. We can find a way of moving forward in a positive way. And, you know, you know they really show that they're serious about their commitments to the Council of Europe. Then maybe we enter a new area. If not, then this is, uh, you know, a situation it's not a dead end anymore, but it might end with Russia completely leaving the Council of Europe. But then it's a clear situation. Now we are in limbo and that's not a very good uh, situation at all. I think as mature politicians and really working for the common interest of this institution, we should be above that discussion. Let's let the Ukrainian and Russian media play that game. But here we are thinking about the future of the institution and of the citizens living in Europe.